No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua daniel george a social media marketing online coach and apologies if the audio is not entirely on point uh, there is a reason why i haven't done videos like this in a while and that is because since i've moved into the new place it is very echoey um, i'm using the blue yeti mic and for some reason it's just picking up a lot of echo um, so what I've actually done as a backup is I've got a, um, a Rode lavalier mic set up to my phone so uh, I'm just going to pick out the best audio of the two and uh, we'll have to find out you know, which one it is after this video um, but uh, in all transparency I'm doing some testing for the live streams that we're going to be doing from the 21st to the 24th of December uh, for the challenge if you are not part of the challenge yet or if you don't know what the challenge is about basically we're going to be doing a four day challenge what i mean by we Erwin and i Erwin guided is like i said one of the best media buyers that i've ever come across and we're going to be doing a four day completely free challenge just to teach you guys the ins and outs of facebook ads so that you can get better results for your clients so that they stay for longer you keep that agency back door shut and you'll be able to you know scale the business much much easier which is also what we're going to be discussing in today's video you know how you can actually scale your agency properly uh, to that next level so that you know you basically from from the bottom where you're currently at now you know you can basically go to the next level to the next sort of um stage of your agency if you will so you you're, you're out of the trenches you know you, you're not constantly uh, getting a client in losing a client getting a client in losing a client you know you're basically able to to build on that foundation that you've got um, and you know one of the ways to do that is obviously to get best results for your clients but like i said in today's video we are going to be discussing how you can scale your agency so how to scale your agency let me just add the capital letter t there as well so a nice that's where everything is all nice and neat. There we go. So with regards to the challenge, it is going to be um, in a Facebook group. The Facebook group is going to be capped out at 100 people. So you do need to be quick. Um, and there are spots still left, definitely. Uh, but obviously, you know, it is filled up pretty quickly. Um, and quick side note, you will need to have existing clients in order for this to work. So all of the like homework assignments, etc., will be based on your existing clients. So if you have not got a client yet, just don't don't uh, you know attend the challenge because you won't get anything out of it. It is literally just for those that have already got clients and they want to make sure that they keep their clients. So anyway, enough uh, rambling on about that. How we can scale the agency? So as I mentioned a few times and in um, a lot of videos now, the agency consists of four pillars. These are not pillars; these are squares. Yes, I know. Um, but just to quickly go through this, I'm not going to spend like 15 minutes drawing out a pillar here. So these are the pillars here. Yeah? We've got outreach, we've got sales, we've got project management, which I'll just call PM, and then we've got project development. Okay, so the outreach part of, so this is basically, you know, the, the this is SRMA in a nutshell. Yeah, so outreach consists of reaching out to potential clients, right? You know, trying to get that pipeline full, trying to get a lot of people either known about your service that you offer or interested enough to actually hop on a call with you. As soon as you can get them on a call, then obviously you've got the sales part of it. Um, this is where you, you know, basically exchange knowledge and value with your potential clients and see if there's a you know, potential to work together with these clients. If there is, then you've got them on as a client. If not, then you know they are either nurtured so that maybe later down the line they can become a client or you just cut all ties completely. And then we've got project management, which basically consists of everything that does not involve your actual service. So this is communication with the client. This is sending reports to the client. This is uh, meetings with your client, meetings with the client's team and so on and so forth. OK, and then we've got project development, which is your actual service. So for most of you guys here, including myself, it is Facebook advertising. So uh, outreach is basically where you, you know, message the clients or call the client and say, hey, listen, I've got a service that you might like. Sales is where you pitch them on the service. Project management is basically when you discuss the metrics of the service, you're in communication about the service, and then project development is actually delivering the service, which, like I said, for most of you guys here, will be Facebook ads. So now the easiest way 
to scale the business is obviously to front load the outreach part because let's say one client will equal uh, just bit, just a quick side note for those that really don't understand this um, it's not about the amount of time you put in it's about the results that you achieve so it's called value based pricing and the great thing about that is that the amount of clients you take on is limitless you know if you can take if you can reach out to that many clients that you end up with a hundred clients in your agency, then that is completely possible because one client does not equal a certain amount of time. Of course, you do need to get results for these clients, but let's say an extra 10 clients does not result or does not equal an extra 20 or 30 hours of work, okay? Obviously, there's a lot you can automate, but there's also a lot that you can outsource and delegate as well, which I do highly recommend is that you do build a team around your agency. But like I said, uh, let's say one client, so you know we get one person through the flow that equals a um, thousand euros or a thousand pounds, thousand dollars, depends on where you're at with your agency and you know what kind of service you offer, etc., and what kind of results you've gotten in the past to validate um, basically you know your price points and of course what retainer can get you a win-win or can get the client a win-win situation as well and a return on investment. So. One client will bring in a thousand. Now, let's say we want to scale to, uh, let's say that is our retainer, yeah? And we want to scale to 8,000 or 8,333, you know? So that means that you basically have a six figure business, you're making more than 100,000 a year. So that means that if you want 8,000, of course, yeah, we can increase the retainers and stuff like that, but just keep this simple, 8,000 equals eight clients, okay? So how do we do that? By keeping that pipeline full. Everyone follow along so long, you know, it's not it's not rocket science, right? So if one client equals 1,000, then eight clients equals 8,000. How do we do that? By reaching out to more businesses and obviously, you know, closing more sales. But now let's just look at these two for a moment. How can we do that? How can we make sure that we are, you know, basically reaching out to that many uh, people and, you know, that many potential clients and, you know, we're getting so many clients in. Now, obviously, the first way to scale the business, I'm just going to write it down just so everything is sort of, you know, on the on the screen, is to uh, keep the pipeline full. Okay, so that's number one, keep the pipeline full. Okay, how do we do that? Now, the first one is obviously to automate the outreach, okay? So how can we do that? Well, you need to think, how are you now currently doing outreach? The majority of you guys will either be sending cold emails, um, call messages on DM, maybe you've got a few people that do the cold calls, this is supposed to be a phone, looks more like a banana, uh, there we go. Okay, so there's a method of outreach that you're currently doing. What we do is basically pay traffic, so I'll just call that PT, plus cold email, okay, so this is basically what we do. Now, in terms of paid traffic, the great thing about it is once we know that the flow is, the flow is profitable, we can just increase the budget, which means you'll reach out to more businesses, yeah? But for a lot of you that um, you know are getting started or only have one client, you don't really want to spend the budget on paid traffic, which it is one of them, right? Like You are offering a Facebook ad service, but you don't want to run Facebook ads for your own agency. Um, you know, it is, it's one of them, like, you know, what are you doing? If you don't, if you don't trust the service, then why are you offering it? But with that said, you know, for some of you, and you know, I also started with organic outreach, um, you know, for some of you, it's just not feasible right this moment to run ads. And that is, that is fine. You know, there are other methods of doing it, called email outreach, for example. So how can we automate or scale the cold email outreach? Well, then what you can do is you can find a email software out there that will allow you to send more emails okay so rather than you sending out more emails manually figure out a way to automate it do, do not do what a robot can do okay so let's just call this 1.1 why uh, let me say so there we go 1.1 why is this so big let me just make that smaller there we go okay so either pay traffic or automate the outsourcing, uh, the outsourcing, the outreach. We'll get into outsourcing in just a moment. Okay, so how can we automate the outreach? Can I continue typing here? There we go. So automate the outreach for email, find email blast software, okay? You've got loads, there's, there's literally, uh, just Google outreach blast software or mass email sender, anything like that. Uh, there is a lot you know, of email software that allows you to send emails at scale. Now, how do you get the emails is, of course, the next question because, you know, it's great having email software that will send multiple emails, but 
how do we get the emails? So that is the next step, right? We need to start thinking, okay, how can we gather emails at scale? Now, of course, there's D7 Lead Finder, which a lot of, of you guys use. Um, which one did I use for a while? I still use actually Mark to Magic. Uh, we don't actually, so Mark to Magic is great for local lead gen. So if you do local lead gen rather than e-com, then Mark to Magic is the go-to place in my opinion. Uh, basically what it does is it just scrapes emails from Google. So you type in, for example, um, fitness or yeah, not fitness, gym. So you type in gym and then the location for London and it'll literally just scrape all the emails um, of gyms in London. So D7 lead, find the Mark to Magic. What else have you got? Find that lead, okay? so. That way you've got a bunch of emails and then you can upload that into email blast software and then you send out that email blast. Um, and what I like to do is I like to um, just send them an email saying, hey, you know, I like what you're doing. Um, I've got some ideas for you. Is it okay to send a quick video? If they reply yes to that, um, which you know a percentage will, a percentage won't, um, then I send them a Loom video. And you know, for those who want to know how my Loom structure is set up, uh, check out my previous video, which is literally called "How to Structure My Looms in 2021." Um, so that is basically how you can front load the outreach. Right, um, you can use email blast software in conjunction with an email scraping software, um, and then you can basically you know, scale the amount of emails that you send. Quick side note. With regards, because obviously that is very much focused on um, local lead gen, you know, for e-com, it doesn't really work. Um, but what you can do for, for e-com is data miners, okay? So you can find a data miner on Upwork. You can find them literally for as cheap as $6 for 100 leads. So you can literally just say to these data miners, listen, I want 100 e-com stores in UK uh, that are using Shopify that I don't know, whatever your niche is, right? That are uh, focused on female apparel. And then the data miners, like I said, Upwork, Fiverr, um, what's the other one? The um, peopleperhour.com is another one. You know, you can just literally hire someone from Bangladesh, India to do this for you. And like I said, it is really, really cheap. And this is what we've done for a very long time as well, is we used a data miner in conjunction with our email blast software. So we've got the data miner scraping e-com leads, from myip.ms, for example, um, which is another one, I'll actually add that. Um, so if you, if you don't wanna automate this and you wanna do it manually to save a bit of cost, uh, save a bit of money, then just use myip.ms, okay? So that is how you scrape the emails, you upload that into the email blast software, you send out that mass email, you ask them, okay, is it okay to send you a quick video? If um, they say yes, then you, know, you, you send the loom video, okay? Now for me, for us, for now, for me, for us for now, for, for now in the agency, we are focused on paid traffic, okay? Now what we're doing is we are running Facebook ads for our own agency and we're offering a free consultation. So the flow, let me just zoom out here, there we go. So the flow for now, so I'll just add an arrow there. So this is our paid traffic flow. I will not type that with the, the pencil, I'll just do it with the, the typewriter. So paid traffic flow. There we go, is as follows. We've got the ad, just call that A. Let me just zoom back in again. And there we go. So paid traffic, we've got the Facebook ad. Can make it a bit bigger, there we go. Offering a free consultation. The free consultation is tailored towards our niche, which is e-commerce. And then the free consultation, if they click on it, they get sent to a landing page or opt-in form, whatever you want to call it. And that opt-in form has a button, yeah? The button, if they click on it, sends them to a calendar page. So calendar page. Okay, on that calendar page, they've got literally our calendar. So you've got all the days that we are available and the times that we are available and then if they click on a time, we ask them for their information. So name, email address, phone number, budget available, website, etc. Then from there, once they fill all that in, can we move everything along? Let me just see if I can, no. Or we need to zoom out. I really need to start getting the hang of this bit there. Um, not full screen, not pan. Why is pan? Ah, there we go, so it is pan. There we go, so as soon as they, fill out all the details to get sent to a thank you page. 
Okay, so this is the flow, really simple, right? So Facebook ads, the landing page, the calendar page, the thank you page. So what we do is we track, okay, how many people that see our ads are on the landing page. If that is more than 1.5%, which means we've got an outbound CTR of higher than 1.5, which means that for every 100 people that see our ad, at least one person clicks through to the landing page. Then with the, 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 the audience that we're targeting, then we know, okay, this is um, an effective advertisement, right? So that, you know, that is the rule of thumb is 1%, we wanna go for 1.5. So we know that at least one person for every 100 people that sees the ad will click through. Then on the landing page, we wanna track, okay, how many people that are on this landing page are actually clicking through to the calendar page. I think the last time I checked, it was 30%, which is fine. You know, that is uh, obviously the higher the better. I think the average is like 40 or 45%, but 30% for us for now is fine. And what we now wanna do, uh, and then basically from here, this is something that we're not yet tracking because we don't just want as many leads as possible. We actually want uh, qualified leads. So I think for now, this is something I like, I don't know, like 20% or something like that. Uh, but we're not yet tracking this properly. What we are tracking is who actually ends up on this thank you page. And we track that with an event button that we call submit application. Why? Because then what we can do is we can tell Facebook, okay, we want people that are most likely to click on, to fire that submit application um, event. So on the, on, the, on the front end, conversions, submit application, um, and then basically telling Facebook, okay, you know, we want to submit applications. So Facebook goes out, finds people that are most likely to hit that event. As soon as someone hits that event, that gets basically fed back to Facebook and Facebook know, okay, this person uh, has fired the event, submit application, find more people like that. And then you've got a positive feedback loop. Okay, and then I think we've got um, contacts on the landing page, which you've only just recently done. And then we've got leads on the um, calendar page. Okay, so those are sort of our custom events contact leads and submit application. So this is our paid traffic flow. This is what we are currently uh, doing. In terms of the ads, um, this is what it currently looks like. So as you can see here, we've, we started off with the image tester, which literally just is testing out different images. Then what we actually did was we found our winning image and then we started testing out different um, forms of copy. For some reason, the so what we did was the winning ad set. So we had different ad sets, we had different images. We took the winning image, we stacked the winning ad sets, added them together, and then we started testing out different forms of copy. For some reason, this was very, very expensive. So let me just go to lifetime. So the image tester, this one, which is our best performer one so far, we spent 363 euros. The outbound click-through rate, which I mentioned needs to be 1.5, is 1.72. And we got, um, as you can see here, 25 submit applications. Now, for those of you that are wondering how come you've got 25 submit applications and only 15 leads, uh, that doesn't make sense. That's because we only started tracking leads later on. So that is why that is like that. Um, so as you can see here, we can see now exactly how many people are through the flow. So how many clicks we've got and how many contacts we've made, how many leads we've got and how many submit applications. Um, because we're on lifetime, obviously like this, this is a bit skewed because we didn't start tracking some metrics until later on. But 25 calls were booked from, how much have we spent so far? 416 euros, which is 16 euros a call. Like I said, if the quality was there, that would be great. We're still tweaking and testing. I think we've got like six or seven really high qualified leads that are in the pipeline that we're still uh, in talks with. But all in all, six out of 25 really high qualified is not um, not perfect. And we're still, you know, in all transparency, we're still testing this out and making sure that, um, you know, I'd much rather spend 300 euros for a call and have like, the most qualified person than spend 16 euros for a call, get loads of calls, but people not being the right fit. One of the mistakes that we made um, before this is that we looked like we were the um, offering the service that our client was offering. Um, we made the same mistake when we were looking for dentist clients. So what we did was we used images that would be um, basically, you know, what, that would draw attention to a dentist. So we had like, you know, um, um, what do you call braces, Invisalign, etc. And we used that as the creative to find more dentist clients. And this resulted in us getting a bunch of people thinking that we offer Invisalign as a service, which we don't. We offer the marketing for the dentists that offer the Invisalign. So uh, that's a mistake that we made previously. That's the same mistake that we made for this as well for Ecom. 
Um, and now that we've tweaked it, the cost bleed has gone up slightly, but you know the, the quality is a little bit better. Um, and we still, you know, we're still tweaking and changing things around. But with regards to the setup, so as I said, the winning images and the winning audiences, we stacked them all and then we started testing the copy. Um, this didn't go as well as we had hoped. So what we've now done is we've just changed up the flow ever so slightly and we're still now in the, in the basically in the phase of test and copy. So for example, if you look at yesterday, six euros a call um, from the image test that we only switched that back on yesterday because we were focused on the copy testing. Switched it back on, got two calls immediately. One was good, one wasn't. Um, so we know that the image tester campaign works. We just now need to make sure that we can test out different forms of copy without you know, us spending but not getting any calls. But anyway, that was a side note. Um, in terms of the scaling the agency, so how to keep the pipeline full, outreach, automation, or paid traffic, okay? Now, in terms of sales, because obviously we now need to, um, you know, if we're getting more calls booked, we need to also improve the sales. Now, how can we do this? We can either outsource or automate, okay? So how can we automate sales? How is that possible? Well, what you can do, which I don't recommend, which I'll get into in just a second, is have a video sales letter or a webinar. So the way the gurus promote you uh, or promote you know, their courses, etc., you can do the same for your agency. So add to a free training, free content, you know, whatever you want to call it, free workshop, etc., uh, that teaches your um, agency clients what you can do. So it's like a case study, right? You know, you're showing them, okay, this is what you can do with Facebook ads. Um, if this is something that you want us to do, uh, or basically you're given two options, you can say, okay, so this is how you do it. And you can now try it yourself, make the same mistakes that everyone else does, or you can take us on as an agency. If you want this, then this is how much we cost. Click here to enroll. That is one way of automating it. Obviously that is a really bad flow, but you know, over time, you'll tweak and test and change things, and then you know you might actually get it to work. But what I actually recommend is to outsource this to a closer, high ticket closer or regular closer, whatever you want to call it. So you get someone that actually does the sales for you. And what this will allow you to do is just look at the overall strategy of the business, or you can position yourself as someone that just focuses on one pillar. So what I actually do is I only focus on the project development. I get the results for the clients and everything on the front end, so the out uh, the outreach is done by the ads. I've got Elliot, my head of operations, that manages the sales and communication. Then the project management is also done by someone else on the team and then I've got the project development side of things. And that is uh, something that I very much enjoy doing and uh, I feel like now that we've set up this structure within the agency, that things are just much, much better, much more streamlined, and um, just much calmer. You know, there's much more predictability. Quick side note, Elliot, I know that you're watching this, and yes, you do help out a lot with the Facebook ads, uh, so just quick side note there, Elliot also helps with the fulfillment of it. Um, but with that said, so how to scale the business with sales, outsource the sales part via a closer or anything like that, or you know, set up a paid traffic webinar or landing page or case study funnel, okay? Same goes for the outreach, by the way. You can also get appointment setters. Um, the only thing with appointment setters, I'll just add a quick side note to that. So appointment setters, what you can do is you can say to them, you get 10% for every client that we end up closing. So they set the meetings, someone else takes the meetings or you take the meetings and then from there, um, you know, if the client, it becomes a client, then you give the appointment setter commission. However, there's no real incentive for that person to continue doing this and continue working. Um, so what I would highly recommend you do if you're going to get an appointment setter on is give them a fixed salary just so you sort of own them, right? So you know, okay, this appointment setter is going to be working um, because he is getting some kind of salary then give them a fixed price for every appointment that they set and then also give them a percentage of uh, the deal that, that, you know, that gets closed. And yes, this will cost you more on the front end, but it will also incentivize the appointment setter much, much more to get more people in and you know, to basically keep front loading that outreach part. Okay. Now, in terms of the project management, another thing that uh, we can scale or automate, etc., 
is um, by using one form of communication and one software. So what we actually do, rather than send the reports, we just use Loom, which you know makes sense. We just show them the metrics, see, show them what works and what doesn't. Um, but one real game changer for us is one form of communication. Now, for some of you, that is very common. Oh yes, we just all use Slack. Oh yes, we just all use Asana or whatever. Um, but for us, you know, we yes, we use Slack internally, but we still had clients that already had everything set up in Basecamp, that already had everything set up in, uh, what, what's the other one, not Basecamp, but there's, you know, there's obviously there's multiple pieces of software there. And they did not want to move just for one agency, move everything over to Slack. Um, so what we've now actually started doing is using Facebook Workplace. And Facebook Workplace, unfortunately, you know, because we've got the team on it, we can't actually show you there. Uh, but Facebook Workplace is basically just a Facebook group for business. So for your clients, for your own team, everyone, etc., that you speak to with regard to the agency, you can all have within sort of Facebook groups. And then within the Facebook group, you've got like different boards, etc. You can upload files. It's basically Slack but free. That's probably the best way to describe it. So in terms of like automating and being able to scale, you need to make sure that you haven't got all these clients um, that are trying to reach out and trying to contact you. You know, you've got a few on Slack, you've got a few on Basecamp, you've got a few on email, you've got a few on Skype. You need to have all that in one place. Why? So that it reduces the amount of time that it takes for you to reply to the client. It reduces friction. It's more efficient. It's more streamlined. And like I said, for us, Facebook Workplace is the next step and the next best thing. Um, it doesn't really matter if you want to use it or not, but in my opinion, I highly recommend looking into it at the very least because it is free. Then with regards to project development, how can we scale this? Now, if you do not want to do the fulfillment part like what I'm doing, um, if you do, then quick side note, just constantly be a student of Facebook ads. Constantly you know, learn uh, you know, what is going on within the industry. Obviously now with iOS 14, there's the whole privacy issue that we need to discuss and talk about. So obviously that's something that I'm really looking into. Um, you know, I'm investing into coaching programs. I'm investing into uh, online courses, obviously in masterminds with other paid traffic uh, or media buyers, etc. And, you know, I'm just constantly trying to learn and develop my media buying skills. But if that is something that you do not want to do, then the easiest way to do that obviously is to outsource it to another media buyer. Now with that said, because the mistake that I made in the past was I outsourced it to a media buyer, but I didn't actually know if that media buyer was doing a good job or not. So what I highly recommend you do is to really um, basically try and learn the basics of Facebook ads, okay? It's okay if you don't know the inner sentence, if you're not gonna offer it as a, you know, do the fulfillment yourself anyway, but Understand the basics so that when you do actually get a media buyer on, when you do actually um, look into outsourcing the paid traffic, you know if that media buying is bullshitting or not. Because I've literally, I've took on a media buyer, obviously this is back in the day, right? But I took on a media buyer um, for, he was 200 pounds a month and his portfolio was like page likes and lead gen and um, stuff like that, that looking back, it like he showed me like cost per clicks that were like 0 0.1 uh, euro. And I thought, okay, well, that, that must be good, right? He's got it in his portfolio, you know, he obviously knows what he's doing. But looking back, you know, because I didn't know, I didn't know what was good and what was bad. Even when he asked, like when I look at old reports that we send clients, it was like, okay, well, uh, this week the click-through rate was up by 2% and this is good, so we're now getting better results. And I was proud, I was sending that to the client, right? I was saying, oh, you know, our click-through rate is up by 2%. And looking back, I think like, what, what, can the, what can the client buy from the click-through rate? You know, does that put food on the table? It doesn't. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters for, especially for e-com, is purchases, purchase conversion value, return on ad spend, return on investment. That is all the client cares about. If you're not getting a return on investment for the client, he does not care if that click-through rate is 10% or 1%. You know, he is not getting... Uh, that return that he's hoping for. So then obviously, you know, that is how you will lose the client. So make sure you understand the basics of Facebook ads before you look into uh, outsourcing, you know, to a media buyer, etc. cetera. Um, and then one last tip before we finish off this video with regards to the media buyer and the outsourcing, etc. Also make sure that that person fits what you want that person to do. So for example, one of the easiest ways to find a media buyer is to go into Facebook groups, right? Go into the ClickFunnels Facebook group, go into the um, Facebook media buyers. So, you know, there's so many Facebook groups out there for, for media buyers. But 
the majority of those people there are entrepreneurs themselves and they do not want to be the outsourcer they do not want to be the freelancer or the number two they want to be the number one as well so just be careful what kind of person you take on with that said if you go on to upwork the quality is less but those people know that they are the freelancers and they are the ones that uh, things are getting outsourced to so they are much more willing to be the number two to pick up the slack and you know do the dirty work basically but like i said you just need to make sure that you ensure that the quality is there okay so ask for their portfolio ask for them to share their screen show them what they've been doing with other clients um give them analyst access to one of the clients they want to outsource it to and just say okay well what would you do in this situation what would you do to get that client to return on investment what would you do to actually improve everything for the clients so anyway that is it for today like i said those are the ways to um basically you know increase the amount of money that you're generating through the agency so obviously number one was keeping that pipeline full number two there we go is to get closers closers or appointment setters for the agency to fulfill the sales part to fulfill the sales fulfill is with one l then number three is automate or streamline the communication slash management and then number four is either develop well i'd probably say further develop your media buying skills plus outsource to a media buyer now with that said we actually do have a white label service for um, anyone that wants to outsource their Facebook ads, um, it, it based, it's officially it's only for those that are in the coaching program. But um, you know we've, we're getting good results with it. I've noticed more and more people have found out about the fact that we do offer a white label service, um, and basically it's two retainers. You know there's no percent or anything like that. It's seven hundred and fifty pounds for ecom clients. It's five hundred pounds for lead gen clients, and. Um, that's basically going off the fact that the majority of lead gen clients are a thousand pounds. So that's 50% of the retainer. And the same goes for e-com. A lot of the you know, uh, more established e-com stores, you can get them on for a 1500 retainer. So that is why we take the 50%. So it's roughly 50% of your average retainer. That makes sure that you can get better results for your clients and that um, you take home 50% of the retainer of the clients uh, passively for basically doing nothing. The way it's set up is that we send you loom updates the, as if you were our client and then you just you know regurgitate data to the client so the client doesn't actually know that you've white labeled it to us um, we just you know communicate with you directly and you communicate with the client directly and that way everything is streamlined you get better results and you can focus on getting more clients in because you know that back end is basically producing the results that the client and you of course want as well but anyway i'm going to wrap up this video here hope you got some out of this leave a comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next if you are interested in the challenge that we are doing on the 21st to the 24th of December, like I said, you will need existing clients and it's gonna be a four day live streamed challenge uh, basically on how you can improve the metrics for your clients, how you can get better results for your clients so that you can keep that back door shut. The limits, it will be capped at 100 people and if you want to gain access to this, uh, it will be linked uh, in the first comment of this YouTube video, so not in the description box, in the first comment, you can get access to the Facebook group um, and then basically we'll, we'll vet, yeah, we'll look into, you know, what you're doing, have you got clients, etc. Um, and then from there, you'll get approved and we start the challenge on the 21st. So I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.